Hello everybody, this is my third lecture of the module 12. Uh, in module 12, I was discussing about the numerical methods of solving the vibration problem and in this connection, I have discussed the numerical evaluation of Duhamel's integral and then also I discussed the two direct integration methods that is central defined scheme and new mark beta scheme. Today, I want to discuss the spectral method of uh, analysis that is used to find out the response of a structure when subjected to, to random excitation. Okay. So, today my uh, discussion will be on spectral analysis of structures uh, for earthquake excitation. Actually, the method that I will develop will be applicable for other type of excitation also, when the excitation has random characteristics. Actually, in all uh, real situations, especially this uh, earthquake, wind, uh, the excitations are not uh, fitted to a deterministic function or a mathematical function. So, this type of excitation is the realization of random process. So, for that the response quantities are to be found in terms of statistics. For engineering application, generally we require first order and second order statistics. First order statistics, I mean it is the average or mean value of the quantity and second order statistics is the variance or its positive square root as the standard deviation. So, outlines of today's lecture is ground motion as a random process. First, I will discuss why the random process is taken into consideration for uh, this response analysis and ground motion is one of the type of random process and then some fundamental theories and relationships required to understand the random vibration or random, uh, random vibration will be discussed. Actually, to study the uh, random vibration, we require some background knowledge of the probabilistic theory, but I will discuss in short the only the things that will be required for our spectral analysis. Then I will go for power spectral density of the response and calculation of mean square value from this power spectral density. This uh, theory of obtaining the power spectral density of response will be illustrated by a numerical example. Okay. Now, one of the random process say earthquake ground motion and say in earthquake ground motion, many things are very uncertain that is what is the source, unpredictable nature and then uh, in structural analysis for earthquake motion or earthquake force, uh, there are other uncertainties also. Actually, in real life, we met different uncertainties. One is unpredictable nature and source of excitation, second is material properties and the initial conditions. This material properties and initial conditions can be controlled, but the nature of an excitation and its source, especially the natural hazards such as earthquake and wind cyclone etcetera is beyond our controls. So, we generally take in design the most severe load and then we follow the deterministic approach. That means, we analyze the uh, system for a input of a sample of the whole process and then we find the uh, response and accordingly we design, but this will not yield the optimum design. Sometimes it may be overestimating or sometimes it may be underestimating. So, we require to discuss or we require to specify all the quantities when the response has 
uncertainties. Response is uncertainties due to uncertainties in excitation or uncertainties in material properties and initial conditions. So, in that case, we require to analyze the different samples that is not only one sample will give you the full information. So, different samples if we analyze and then we can find the statistics from this analysis of a group of samples, then we can uh, conclude that this is the criteria for design. But it is also a problem in many cases that number of sample sizes are very limited. So, we do not get a large number of samples, because the prediction in statistical method depends on the number of samples. If the number of samples are large, our prediction will be uh, as far as close to the this uh, realistic uh, value. So, therefore, uh, for better understanding and interpretation of result, we require to uh, describe the excitation as well as its response in probabilistic sense. Our discussion will be limited to the uh, linear system. Okay. Now, say a multi storied building, for example. Uh, different floors have masses say m 1, m 2, m 3 etcetera up to m n. Say this is n number of floors here in the multi storied building and the base is subjected to ground acceleration. One of the real ground acceleration record that is found in the Bhuj earthquake is this type of excitation. From this excitation, this is the ground acceleration history it is a unit is a centimeter per second square. Okay. So, you can see the maximum that is attained is 23 centimeter per second square and uh, from the ground motion history, it is not possible to determine what type of function will be fitting the excitation. Uh, expression. Okay. There is no function available to fit this excitation. This is highly random nature and uh, deterministic analysis taking only a sample of uh, input can be carried out by numerical integration scheme that I have discussed in other two lectures uh, that is uh, Duhamel's integral or uh, this direct integration scheme you can use to find out the response to a sample of input, but this will not give you the uh, correct information. So, therefore, we require to discuss in statistical sense. Okay. Other examples are say a vehicle model, a vehicle which is modeled as a spring mass system which is traveling on a, a rough road, uneven road. So, due to roughness of the uh, road, the suspension systems are excited as a result this uh, spring and damper has a relative displacement due to the roughness and uh, this uh, the displacement of the mass. So, relative velocity z dot minus h dot and relative displacement is z minus h. So, if I write the equation of motion uh, taking consideration of the roughness of the root, then I will get the equation of motion as m z double dot plus c z dot plus k z equal to c h dot plus c h, where h is the roughness of the road. Now, h uh, is a roughness of the road and it cannot be uh, taken as a deterministic function. Roughness is uh, formed due to different causes, may be your uh, this defect in the construction that is some construction joints are left or uneven finishing or due to heavy vehicle movements or due to weather conditions, heavy rainfall etcetera some portholes are created on the road. So, this will uh, produce the roughness in the road. So, this roughness of the road is the major source of excitation 
in the vehicle. As a result, vehicle is subjected to a force which is given by C H dot plus K H. It is K H that is the stiffness of the suspension system. Okay. Now, here you can see that H and H dot are the roughness process and its uh, derivative. So, if H is uh, roughness, if H is a roughness which is defined as a function of x, then its derivative H dot x can be determined d h by d x into d x by d t. Now, consider that uh, vehicle is moving at a constant velocity, then h dot is the derivative process of the roughness can be written as v into d h by d x. There is the slope of the road profile into velocity will give you the uh, time derivative of the roughness if the velocity is constant. Now, knowing this quantity, this uh, response of the vehicle subjected to uh, the ground unevenness can be found out. This is similar to earthquake excitation, where earthquake the building is shaken by the ground motion. Here, this uh, vehicle is excited by the road roughness. Now, let us discuss some basic theories of the probability and statistics so that you can follow easily the spectral uh, method of analysis for the ground motion. So, let us consider an event that can occur in h different ways out of total number of n possible ways, all of which are equally likely. Then probability of the event can be defined as h by n. So, probability is defined by simple relation h by n. The probability can also be defined in another way. For example, consider n number of uh, samples, total number of sample is n in a trial and uh, during some experiment, the sample points are x 1, x 2 up to x n that is observed and it is also found that x 1 is observed n 1 times, x 2 is observed for n 2 times and x n was observed n n times. Uh, the relative occurrence of x i any sample say x i can be defined as this is the relative frequency of occurrence r n that is the symbol uh, capital N is the total number of samples relative occurrence of x i can be defined as limit as n tends to infinity of small n i divided by capital N. Small, small n i is the number of times that x i was observed during the experiment and capital N is the total number of samples. So, if I take a limit of this ratio as n tends to infinity, this will uh, give the relative frequency of occurrence of x i. It is found that relative frequency of occurrence of a random event during repeated trials tends to be a limiting value as the number of trials becomes large. So, this is a common phenomenon and this is known as statistical regularity. Okay. Now, we will be dealing with the random variable and random process. Let us discuss these two things. Random variable x say x is a random variable. For example, earthquake ground motion or road roughness or wind velocity which is also random is a function of time or space or both such that for every real number x in the domain also called the sample space, there exists a probability. So, probability is defined here as p of x less than uh, equal to x uh, for a discrete random process. There are two types of random variable discrete and continuous. Random process is actually family of random variables. 
So, if I collect various random variables and this will produce a random process. It is a set of collection of items commonly denoted by say here we are dealing with the time variant quantity that is response or excitation in dynamics which are both dependent on time. So, we are assuming that x t is a set of collection of common random process set of collection of say response or excitation we have collected different records and this set is uh, forms random process of x t. Okay. Now, sample function of a random process say for example, we collected various samples of a earthquake motion or wind gust or say for example, air pressure is measured during a flight on the wing of an aircraft and uh, for a long distance flight different records are collected. So, this forms a set of random variables and the collection of all such records is known as ensemble. So, this is what is this collection is known as ensemble. So, a large number of time histories are recorded and collected during the flight. So, for example, here and these are say x 1 t, x 2 t, x t 3 like that. This may be also different uh, ground motion observed at a particular site. So, we can also form the ensemble of ground motion as in a particular site. So, x 1, x 2 etcetera together makes the random process x t. Collection of all such sample function forms the ensemble of a random process. Now, here you can see at time t is equal to t 1, if I record the x 1, x 2 etcetera at t 1, this forms the random variables at time t is equal to t 1. Similarly, at time t is equal to t 2, the random variables can be collected. So, instead of uh, taking the, the extreme peak response from found from the simple or a single input function, if I analyze this uh, any system dynamic system for a number of samples and then if I take the average of the say response may be displacement, may be velocity or acceleration then it will represent the ensemble statistics and this will uh, give you the realistic quantity in the design approach. Okay. Now, there are uh, random variables which are independent. For example, that uh, in a dynamic uh, problem we have the excitation and uh, we have the initial conditions, uh, we have boundary conditions. Okay. Suppose the excitation in initial condition, if I consider these two as a random process, excitation cannot be related to the initial condition. So, these are two independent random process and they are also uncorrelated. Therefore, if I want to denote the uh, this quantity that is the independence of the random variable, then I have to find this uh, the k, k is the, the variance of the random variable x and y is another variable here or same variable say we are taking same variable at two time instant we are finding this. So, x t 1 and x t 2 and then this these are the mean. So, for independent random variables we have this uh, quantity equal to 0, no correlation exists. That means, for independent random variables we have this probability of this variable say x 1 into probability of x 2 will give you the joint probability of x 1 and x 2. If the process is independent. Okay. However, first let us define what are these quantity means that mu 
then what is the meaning of the symbol E and how these are used in random vibration theory. Okay. Now, first let us understand what is average value of random variable x. If x be a discrete random variable with x 1, x 2, x 3, x n are the uh, this sample in this uh, variable, then average of x capital X can be defined as summation of x i into the relative frequency n i divided by n. Now, this n i by n is nothing but the relative frequency r n of x i. So, therefore, we can um, tell that uh, average is nothing but weighted sum of different samples, where the weight factor is nothing but relative frequency from which we get the definition of expected value which is nothing but average. So, E x now the symbol E or operator E that is used to denote the mean value of the random quantity E of x, x is a random variable is equal to limit of n tends to infinity, the sample size must be very large average x capital X and this is given by this quantity. So, here we are writing the summation i is equal to 1 to n x i into limit of r capital N of x i as capital N tends to infinity is nothing but x i into probability of x i. So, this limit or uh, limit r n x i as n tends to infinity and here is the number of samples is nothing but probability of x i. So, we can write like that. So, this is what is expected value. If the random variable is continuous, then we can use the integral sign instead of summation. So, expected value of x is nothing but integration of minus infinity to plus infinity x into p x d x, where p x is the probability density function random variable x. Now, very important property of probability density is that if probability density is integrated function is integrated from infinity to plus infinity the value is 1. Okay. Now, having known the expected value that is in our analysis we will refer this as a first order statistics. Now, we will go for the higher order statistics. So, expected value is E of x t which is given as mu x. So, mu x is the mean value or expected value mean value of x then the nth moment we are not only confined with this uh, the mean value we are going to know the higher order this uh, moment. So, higher order moments expected value of x to the power n t equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity x to the power n probability density of x t because here the index t is uh, assigned because we are dealing with the time dependent quantity in dynamics. Okay. But in uh, our engineering applications, the nth order moment will be restricted to second order moment because we are dealing with only the mean and standard deviation mainly. So, standard deviation will be related to second order moment. So, if I put n is equal to 2 in this expression, then we get this integration minus infinity to plus infinity x square into probability density of x t d x. So, this is what is the mean square value, very important quantity in this uh, structural dynamics when subjected to random excitation. And the mean square value also is related to the RMS, this is root mean square value. If I take the 
square root of this quantity and positive value will give you the root mean square. The central moment is defined. Now, we have defined this moment without considering its uh, deviation from the mean. Now, if we take the central moment that is if we interested to know the deviation from the mean, then we write this expected value of x t minus mu x. x t is the random variable and mu x is the mean of this variable raised to the power n is equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity into x minus mu x raised to the power n into probability density of x and t d x. So, this is the central moment, okay, but of nth order, but as you know for engineering application we will restrict our discussion only up to n is equal to 2. So, for n is equal to 2 the central moment above is known as variance. So, this quantity is known as variance. variance of random variable x. So, variance is defined as this expected value of x t minus mu x square integration minus infinity to plus infinity x minus mu x whole square p of x t d x. It is the probability density function. Okay. This is probability density function. Now, from the variance, we can note that the mean is also an important factor, because it uh, gives the uh, deviation from the central value that is the mean. Therefore, the positive square root of the variance is also called the standard deviation. Earlier, we have seen the root mean square uh, value, uh, which is found from the uh, square root of the mean square value. In the mean square value, we did not consider the mean of the random process, but in the variance of x where the mean is also existing, then we get the square root of the variance as the standard deviation. Okay. If mean is 0, then variance becomes equal to mean square value. Okay. Now, if I uh, expand this quantity uh, expected value of x minus mu x square. What is this quantity? This quantity is nothing but variance. So, if I expand quantity inside the third bracket, we get expected value E of x square minus 2 x mu x plus mu square x. That is after uh, this x squaring this quantity, you will get this. Then, uh, after simplification, you can write E of x square minus mu x square. So, which means that variance is nothing but mean square value minus square of the means. So, variance sigma square, sigma is the uh, symbol for standard deviation, and square of the standard deviation is nothing but variance. So, sigma square is generally used for the standard uh, symbol for variance. So, sigma square is nothing but mean square value minus square of the mean. Another factor is used uh, to know the randomness in the sample that is the coefficient of correlation. It is defined as the standard deviation that is the sigma divided by mean mu. Okay. Now, there are different types of random process. Broadly, it is classified as stationary and non-stationary process. A stationary process is that in which the probabilistic structure of the process is independent of time. For engineering application, we generally understand by the stationarity is that the process where the mean and standard deviation being invariant of time. That means, in stationary process, the mean value and standard deviation will not change with time. So, this will remain as constant and most of the uh, random process considered in dynamic analysis in real life situation 
is falling under the group of stationary process. A process which does not obey such rules that is where the mean and standard deviation or variance is a uh, function of time, it is varying with time, then it is a non-stationary process. Okay. Again, there is uh, subgroups of stationary random process and these are ergodic process and non-ergodic process. So, ergodic process is a subclass of stationary random process and what is ergodic process? In ergodic process, if we have a sufficiently long record of random process say time history of ground acceleration and it can represent the characteristic of the entire time histories in the ensemble such that if we compute the average from a single record and if we find that it is equal to the ensemble averages that is from a number of records if we calculate the mean and from the same record if we calculate the mean and if these two are equal then the process is called as ergodic process. So, ergodic process must be of sufficiently long record because large number of sample points should be there. The most of the physical phenomenon are denoted uh, as a ergodic process in uh, to simplify the analysis and as you know the ergodic process is a class of stationary random process, but all ergodic process must be stationary, but stationary random process may not be ergodic also. Okay. So, that thing you should understand. The definition of temporal mean and mean square value and variance are important for ergodic process. So, for ergodic process as we have told that mean standard deviation and variance are calculated from a single record. So, these averages are uh, described like this, this is the ensemble average and this is the average from a single record. So, E of x t and E this uh, symbol is given for this uh, temporal average. So, this is nothing but temporal average, this bracket is given. Similarly, temporal uh, correlation here it is described like that E of x t into E x t plus tau, tau is the, the time lag or shift you can say for the time history of the record and uh, this is the characteristics of the ergodic process that is ensemble average is equal to temporal averages. Now, definition of temporal averages are say simple mean which is limit of total time period that is total time for which the record is available. This time period should be very large. So, limit t tends to infinity. This time period means time span for which the record is available 1 by capital T integration 0 to t x of t dt. So, this is the expected value of this uh, not expected value, this is the temporal mean. Similarly, the temporal mean square for ergodic process mean square value is defined like that limit t tends to infinity 1 by t integration 0 to capital T x square d t. Then uh, variance is defined in the ergodic process as limit of capital T tends to infinity 1 by capital T integration 0 to capital T into x minus mu x square d t. Okay. Now, sometimes we want to measure the similarity between two records or two quantities. So, consider two records x t and y t. So, the similarity that is the cross covariance between two records is defined as with the symbol k x y of time t 1 t 2 equal to expected value of x t 1 minus mu x t 1 into 
capital Y T 2 minus mu Y T 2. Okay. So, if I take uh, the expected value after uh, decomposing the expression inside the bracket term by term, then I get this quantity K x y equal to expected value of x t 1 y t 2 minus mu x into mu y and uh, this is you can see we can write this first this quantity is written which is cross correlation phi x y t 1 minus t 2 minus mu x mu y phi x y is called cross correlation function when the correlation between the same function is required then instead of y we replace x so then this function this cross correlation function is called as autocorrelation function so this is called as autocorrelation function when the correlation in correlation is sought between two functions okay so here we can see this is the function x 1 t and this is another function x 2 t. So, we have defined this uh, cross correlation between this uh, function x 1 and x 2 in the same way. So, instead of y we have put here x 2. Okay. So, that uh, result I have discussed earlier also with another simple function y. Okay. Then autocorrelation function this is a function x t and if it is shifted by this amount tau then at this instant it is x t and at this instant x t plus tau it is this ordinate. So, autocorrelation is defined that is the correlation between the same function with a time lag is defined as temporal mean because it is related to ergodic process temporal mean of x t into x t plus tau equal to limit capital T tends to infinity 1 by capital T 0 to t x t into x t plus tau d tau capital T here I means the duration of the record available for analysis. So, this is what is autocorrelation function. Now, uh, from the original expression we can now write the autocorrelation function here uh, with the uh, autocovariance. Now, here it will be termed as autocovariance k x x t 1 t 2 equal to expected value of x t 1 x t 2 minus mu x t 1 into mu x t 2 and uh, we can easily write this in a symbolic form phi x y t 1 t 2 minus mu x of t 1 mu x of t 2. For stationary 0 mean random process the mean value will not appear here and this is what is known as the autocorrelation function. And for ergodic process if we define the, uh, the shift t 2 minus t 1 as tau then we can write that phi x s equal to r x s argument t 2 minus t 1 equal to r x x t 1 minus t 2 equal to r x s tau equal to r x s minus tau. Now, you can see this autocorrelation functions are dependent on the variable that is the time shift tau and it is also a, a symmetric function because r of tau equal to r of minus tau. So, that indicates it is a symmetric function. Okay. So, highly random process will uh, present the autocorrelation function like that. You can see the maximum value of autocorrelation function is obtained here. So, there are some properties of autocorrelation function that uh, you should know actually and it is required to solve problem. R tau is symmetric function of tau and mod of R tau is uh, less than equal to R naught that I have shown you in the earlier slide 
then maximum value of r tau is at tau is equal to 0. So, by definition r x of tau is equal to E x t into E x t plus tau. So, if we put t tau is equal to 0, then r x 0 is nothing but E of x square t that is what is mean square value. So, that is very important uh, conclusion that we get. Uh, if we evaluate the autocorrelation at 0 time lag that is tau is equal to 0, it gives you the mean square value of the random process. Now, let us come to the spectral analysis. Spectral analysis is specially meant for uh, the analysis of structure for dynamic input which are the realization of random process. So, uh, instead of uh, describing the input in terms of time histories, here the input is defined in frequency domain. However, the Fourier transform of stationary process does not exist. So, therefore, we have to uh, do it in the mean square sense. That means, instead of the integral that we write here the mod of x t d t minus infinity to infinity. Suppose, x t is a stationary ergodic process is not bounded, but this difficulty is overcome by carrying a spectral analysis with autocorrelation function. So, the autocorrelation function when the integration is carried out uh, between the limit minus infinity to plus infinity it is bounded. So, in spectral analysis we require to find the spectral information of the response quantities or spectral information of the excitation. Given the excitation spectral information that is actually related to the energy of the signal. So, basically the spectral analysis is a analysis to obtain the strength of the signal. Now, here the spe uh, spectral analysis is generally or sometimes it is called as power spectral density analysis. So, power spectral density is related to the energy of the signal or the vibration. Now, in this approach especially if we take this uh, zero mean ergodic process then the definition of power spectral density or simply it is called the spectral density function is equal to say S is the symbol for spectral density we will use here uh, is a function of omega that is the frequency is defined as 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity r x tau exponential minus i omega tau d tau, where i is the imaginary unit. Now, you can see this quantity is nothing but uh, the Fourier transform of this r x tau. So, spectral density is nothing but the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. Again you can see if I take the inverse transform, then autocorrelation function become r x tau equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity s x of omega e to the power i omega tau d omega. The spectral density is always a positive quantity because it is related to the power and power, power is al always a function of energy. So, therefore, it is always a positive quantity and it is symmetric. The limit of integration that is minus infinity to plus infinity here that is only for mathematical convenience that is uh, for sometimes this integration minus infinity to plus infinity falls under the standard improper integral that can be carried out very easily. Otherwise, within the, uh, the frequency range of interest or frequency range in which the power spectral density is defined, one can carry out the integration and find the power spectral density. Inverse transform is the autocorrelation function and 
very interesting relationship will arise if we put tau is equal to 0. If we put tau is equal to 0, then it becomes R x 0 equal to integration minus infinity to plus infinity s of x omega d omega. What does it mean? This means that area under the power spectral density curve is nothing but auto autocorrelation function evaluated at tau is equal to 0 and this is what is mean square value. That is what is mean square value or that is denoted by the symbol sigma square it is variance and square root of this will give you the standard deviation or RMS value. Now, random processes are uh, given different names depending on the characteristics of PhD. PhD here means power spectral density. So, one kind of power spectral density is white noise that has uniform power uh, spectral density that is the y coordinate here is PhD here is the PhD and this is the frequency x coordinate has frequency and y coordinate has uh, the PhD. So, here the if the uh, power spectral density magnitude is constant throughout the frequency domain of this uh, uh, structure then it is called the white noise. The analogy is done with the white light which contains equal contribution from all visible frequency component that is why it is known as white noise. The random process whose power spectral density is constant over a certain uh, frequency interval or it is limited to a constant value within the certain frequency interval then it is known as the band limited white noise. Okay. But one interesting thing is that if I want to evaluate the autocorrelation function from the power spectral density using the standard relationship integral that is R x of tau equal to S naught integration minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power i omega tau d, om d omega it can be seen at once that this is not bounded because this integral cannot be evaluated and its value will be infinity. However, from the definition of direct delta function, direct delta function mathematically is defined as direct delta tau equal to 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power i omega tau d omega and therefore, we can write the autocorrelation function using the direct delta function. So, autocorrelation function is delta correlated function. So, autocorrelation function for white noise process is 2 pi s naught direct delta evaluated at tau. Now, band limited noise that has power spectral density uniform over certain frequency range. Say here frequency range is w 1 minus w 2 and here this frequency range. The negative sign is used only for convenience of uh, this uh, mathematics that is uh, to apply the integration minus infinity to plus infinity sometimes become easier or to have uh, the symmetrical function of this uh, power spectral density curve to just uh, reflect the symmetry of the power spectral density curve one can shift the origin at 0. So, therefore, the negative frequency has no physical uh, meaning, but it is only for the mathematical convenience that the origin is shifted at 0 to have the frequency range. Uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, here you can see that uh, the PhD remains constant over certain band of frequency. So, autocorrelation function for broadband process is like that 
autocorrelation function is this and then this uh, process has a power spectral density like that. So, it is a two sided power spectral density uh, the because the symmetry is concerned uh, considered for the entire range of frequency. One sided spectral density may also be considered for the real as uh, positive domain of the this frequency. So, this is what is broadband process characteristics. Uh, the, this type of process is generally known as band limited white noise. There are categories where the broadband and narrowband random process are also falling under the band limited white noise. Now, here you are seeing a broadband process that is uh, the power spectral density is uniform over a considerable range of frequency. This is omega 2 minus omega 1 that is the frequency range is considerable, but sometimes you may have it may happen that a process uh, the power spectral density has the significant values over a narrow band of frequency. Here you can see that power spectral density is only showing its this uh, significant value concentrated at omega naught. And this type of excitation is very common when the it is a harmonic function. Say a harmonic function with a random amplitude, randomly varying amplitude is a random process and its autocorrelation function will be like that and power spectral density being a narrow band process will reflect this characteristics. So, this is the autocorrelation function of the narrow band process. Uh, actually, this is the autocorrelation function, this is the autocorrelation function and this is what is PhD, PhD of narrow band process. PhD of narrow band process. Okay. This is the autocorrelation function. Okay. Now, we are now coming to the last item that is how to find out the response or power spectral density of a dynamic system given the power spectral density of the excitation. Excitation may be your earthquake excitation, may be wind excitation or may be any other type of random excitation for which power spectral density is known. Now, here consider a single degree freedom system first and uh, we define this uh, quantity in terms of single input output process. So, suppose this is a single degree freedom system having the mass being damper. and uh, you can see this is the displacement x velocity x dot and acceleration x double dot and this is the force f t. Now, here f t is random this is random force. The random force is defined in terms of power spectral density suppose s f omega is the PhD of force F t. Then the PhD of the response that we are interested can be found out from a very important relationship h omega square that is modulus of h omega square and into a power spectral density of the forcing function. Okay. Now, here you can see the h omega is nothing but complex frequency response function. Complex frequency response function and it is given by 1 divided by k minus m omega square plus i c omega. So, this is a complex quantity. 
Now, modulus of this uh, h omega has to be found out and squared up and then it has to be multiplied with S f omega, then we can calculate the, the power spectral density of the response. If I want the power spectral density of the velocity, here it indicates the power spectral density of the displacement. If I want to find out the power spectral density of the uh, velocity, then it can be found out with this relationship S x dot omega equal to omega square s x of omega and also the acceleration x s x double dot of omega equal to omega to the power 4 s x of omega. So, single input output relationship is like that and the power spectral density of response now suppose this is a typical power spectral density of the response and you can see that if I uh, calculate the area under the power spectral density curve, it will represent the mean square value that sigma x square or variance which is nothing but the area under the power spectral density curve. Now, here the limit of integration can be changed based on the uh, frequency range of the power spectral density or the frequencies of the system in which there is a possibility of resonance that you have to cover in this frequency range. The mod of h omega can be also calculated as a product of h omega and its complex conjugate. So, it becomes mod of h omega becomes 1 divided by k minus m omega square whole square plus c omega square. Now, let us come to a problem where we want to find the response of a single storied building subjected to ground acceleration. Ground acceleration uh, during earthquake that is the power spectral density function of the ground acceleration is given by various authors. One of such expression is given by Kanai and Tajimi and known as Kanai and Tajimi spectra. See the reference below that I have given. Uh, two papers published in 1957 and 1960. So, PhD of ground motion is here S naught into 1 plus 2 j g r whole square divided by 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 j g r whole square. What is S naught? S naught is 0 0.141 j g x double dot square g max divided by omega g root over 1 plus 4 j square g. Now, here j g is the soil damping and x double dot g max is the peak ground acceleration and r is the frequency ratio. Okay. Now, knowing this uh, ground spectra, we can now calculate the power spectral density function of the uh, the system, the dynamic system. Let us illustrate with a problem. A single storage shear building model is shown here and uh, it is idealized as a single degree freedom system. The model is given an earthquake acceleration uh, whose PhD function is defined as per Kanai and Tajimi spectral acceleration. Determine the mean square value of the lateral sway due to earthquake motion. So, Kanai and spectra, uh, Tajimi's uh, power spectral density function is this that I have explained in my earlier slide and where S naught is given by this uh, quantity where the peak ground acceleration is a important factor, soil damping is also important factor and this soil natural frequency is also an important factor. So, that factor has to be known and generally Kanai Tajmi has suggested to take the omega g ground frequency as 12.7 radian per second and ground uh, damping as 0 0.6. So, we take this data and go forward to calculate the power spectral density function. So, equation of motion for the idealized single degree model is x double dot plus 2 j omega n x dot plus omega n square x equal to minus 
x double dot g that is the ground acceleration. Now, using above parameters and peak ground acceleration 0.4 g, we assume that peak ground acceleration is 0.4 g, g is the acceleration due to gravity equal to 9.8 meter per second square, the constant s naught comes as 0 0.0655. Then, if x x g omega is the power spectral density of the ground acceleration and h omega is the complex frequency response of the structure, then we get S x omega equal to h omega square plus S x g omega. Then mean square value is calculated by taking the integral of this S x omega and here instead of infinite limits, we have uh, use the finite limit omega 1 to omega 2 in which the power spectral density of the uh, ground acceleration is significant. Okay. Now, if I plot the power spectral density function of the ground acceleration, it will look like that the peak value of power spectral density function is 0 0.12 meter square per second cube per radian. Okay. So, that is uh, the Kanai Tazmi ground spectral acceleration. Now, the calculation can be performed in tabular form, here we write uh, this frequency omega is uh, at an interval of 10 I have taken 0, 10, 20, 30 up to 70 I have taken the frequencies and corresponding ground acceleration is calculated from the expression of Kanai Tazmi uh, spectra and then corresponding ground acceleration with the frequency omega that is starting from 0 to 70 are tabulated in this column. You can see this uh, the maximum value is 0 0.1195 and this uh, ground acceleration spectra is shown here. This is the picture of the ground acceleration spectra that is plotted with these two values in the column first two columns and then we found the h omega mod of h omega uh, which can be calculated from this expression that is h omega mod equal to 1 upon k minus m omega square whole square plus c omega square. Now, here we are using the non dimensional form of the equation of motion as x double dot plus 2 i j omega n x dot plus uh, this omega n square x equal to minus x double dot. So, therefore, the powers uh, h omega can be calculated as 1 upon here we can write this omega n uh, square here we can write this omega n square minus omega square whole square plus 2 i j omega n whole square. Here this is the structural damping. The data given in the problem we will select for this. Here is the natural frequency of the system uh, omega n and omega is the frequency that we take in the defined range. So, we will get a h omega here, we will get the h omega here and then h omega square mod of h omega square into this h g is calculated 1 by 1. You can see here it is calculated as against each row, each frequency and these are 0 that means, values are very small. So, I have written 0. So, now, if I show you the plot of power spectral density of the response, this is what this last column indicates the power spectral density of the response. So, if I show the plot of this last column, it will represent a plot like this. So, this is the PhD of the response 
an area under the curve will give you the mean square value. So, area under curve is the mean square value. is mean square value and you calculate the area under curve by any means using the numerical techniques that I have discussed trapezoidal rule or Simpson rule. Uh, you will get the value nearly uh, 0.12 square meter and square root of this quantity will give you the RMS value. So, this is the explanation of this uh, spectral analysis and how to use this to find the, uh, the mean square value of the response quantity uh, given the power spectral density of the response. If somebody wants the mean square value of the velocity, then one can find this, this curve. and mean square value of the acceleration then omega to the power 4 so let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture the procedure to obtain power spectral density of the response of systems subjected to random excitation is discussed first the basic definition of technical terms used in random vibration theory was explained and certain important statistical expressions was derived. We mainly concentrated on simplest type of random excitation that is called ergodic process. The input output relationship of spectral density was given. The earthquake ground acceleration spectra was discussed and problem of single degree freedom system that is a model of single story shear building when subjected to ground motion was solved to find the mean and mean square uh, to find the mean square value of the displacement. We have taken the zero mean process, so we found the mean square value of the displacement. If I take the square root of this, this will indicate the RMS value root mean square value. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.